every single week or so, we get out our vacuum cleaners, dust rags, and aprons and start scrubbing away at the dirt and grime that regularly seems to accrue. While we generally know how to make our houses look pretty, do we really know how to make them as joyful and harmonious as they can be? The author of Magical Housekeeping, Simple Charms and Practical Tips for Creating a Harmonious Home is here with us today to give us simple, inexpensive, and easy to implement tips. Welcome to the show, Ms. Pess Whitehurst. Look at that book cover. I love it. Thanks for being here, driving all the way up from Los Angeles. I love it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. You know, why do you think that cleaning up our clutter and becoming a little bit more organized and living in a harmonious home will make our lives less stressful? That's basically what we're saying here, right, Tess? This is a big aspect of it, yes. And I think that's because we all know on some level that our internal environment matches our external environment. They reflect each other. So oh. when we clear out our clutter, we're actually clearing our minds. We make things easier, simpler, and when, when we experience a clutter-free home on a regular basis, it actually positively affects every single area of our life because it lifts our mood and clears our minds. So there are several things that we can do. Uh, we can arrange our home in a certain way to increase the creativity of, of the home and of our minds as well, you're saying, right? Okay, right. restore good energies. You said front doors are very important. I wanna to get to this right away because this is really interesting. Why are front doors so important? Well, I love to talk about front doors because they are the first impression. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you see the front door of a house, the mood of it really kind of sets the tone for the home. And this picture I chose because while this is a beautiful front door, this actually breaks one of the rules that I think is really important. You see how the left plant is kind of going in front of that door? Yeah. It a little bit creates a feeling of unwelcome and it's a little bit inconvenient that you have to kind of step around it. So it's, it's subtle, but it's very important. For this particular door, I would choose smaller plants. Okay, gotcha. Now we have other pictures of other doors. Mm -hmm. And is this more of a look that you would like with these other pictures that we're about to see? Yeah, the next picture of a front door. See, I, I think it's not about style. I think everyone should pick their own style, whatever is most you know powerful for you, what feels the best to you. But see how these plants, they, they're big, they're substantial, but they don't uh, cover the door in any way. You wouldn't have to feel like you're stepping around them. So it, it has a much more welcoming and harmonious feeling. Okay, doormats, you say, are really important as well. Doormats are <laughs> <huge>. <laughs> We don't want this one. <laughs> the reason I chose this one, I mean, obviously some people have the cutesy, not welcome, or, you know, go away, which on some subtle level is really kind of probably detrimental to when they have guests, so that's kind of obvious. But also, this particular type of doormat gets dirty very quickly, kind of holds dust, and often tracks those coarse hairs into the home. So I did pick another one that has a, a better, this one, it just feels more vibrant. It has a more, um, it's it, happy. It, yeah, it's happier. And, and I encourage everyone just to really wait choose a doormat based on what just clicks for you, what feels right, because something as simple as a doormat can just really lift your mood when you're coming home, yeah. when you invite people over, and it's inex an inexpensive yeah. way to spruce up really your whole like home. One. Imagery around the house is really important, you say, as well. Let's get to those pictures. Yeah, this is huge. So, so this picture I picked because this would be really positive. All, all psychologists and ad executives know that Imagery is huge for our, it, it can have such an effect on our subconscious mind, at, which can affect every aspect of our mm -hmm. lives. So this particular picture um, would really enhance, I mean, it's important that everyone picks something that's powerful for them, but for me, this would enhance my creativity. Got it, got it. And there's some other ones too, if we can get through those. That one's really interesting. Yeah, so I've seen, in my work as a feng shui consultant, I've seen all kinds of different images. And so this, if this were a photograph, perhaps, that someone took and had on their wall, it's possible that something like this could cause them to feel like life was a struggle. Because yes. you can kind of see the, the knuckles and like you're climbing at an impossible angle. So I just encourage people to check in with your imagery, look at it, make sure it's giving you a uh, uh, message that you really want to you know, yeah. experience in your life. Well, those are really interesting. And I know we're almost out of time here, but I also want to, because you brought some um, ways to freshen up your home as well. Right. It's, with this. Yes, aromatherapy, aromatherapy. is huge mm -hmm. and the commercial air fresheners, while they smell really good, they're unfortunately not really very good for us or the environment well, usually. Well actually sometimes they don't even smell good because I bought one and it <laughs> smelled like um, 
that old musky cologne that men used and to wear. And yeah, it's really strong, yeah. so, yeah. and we're sensitive, you know, we're, we're natural beings, so when we smell something made of chemicals, it's not great yeah. for us. This I brought, you can make your own, and this rose water is, um, is, is completely natural. It's, it's distilled from actual rose petals. You can actually eat this. You can oh. actually put this in your water, okay. but not once you put this in it. This is cedar wood oil. It's an essential oil. And you can just put, you know, like 12 drops in, in rose water. And then I also brought this white chestnut essence, which is a stress reliever, actually. Oh, it's a homeopathic stress so reliever. You can make stress. your own. You can make your own. A smile that you like. Spray that while I talk about your book signing. You definitely <laughs> want to see this book. It's so interesting. It's full of great tips for your home. It's called Magical Housekeeping, Simple Charms and Practical Tips for Creating a Harmonious Home. And Tess will be back in Fresno, by the way, signing her book on September 18th. September 18th. 18th, 1 through 4, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Fresno Borders. We all know where that is. Now, talk to her, get her book, and get her to sign it because it's a wonderful, wonderful, magical book, I should say. Tess, thanks so much. Thank so you. Be talking to you. Thank you we'll so much. We'll talk to you soon, all right? Okay. All right, thanks again. Still to come on Central Valley today, the people trying to get you fit. Hear from a woman who lost nearly 80 pounds with Jillian from The Biggest Loser. We'll be right back.